Okay, we're going to do section 5.3 now, and this one is really super important and makes our life a lot easier. The Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. Okay, so, it says, if f is a continuous function on the closed interval a, b, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is f of b minus f of a, uh, with capital F's, right, where the capital F function is any antiderivative of f of x. Okay, so instead of doing all the limit definition stuff, what this means is that, say we want to evaluate the integral from 2 to 5 of x squared dx. Okay, then all we have to do is figure out the antiderivative for x squared, which is 1 third x cubed. And then we evaluate that and find the difference when we evaluate it at the lower bound and the upper bound. So that's what this little notation with the little line means. It means we're going to evaluate the function uh, and find the difference. For the upper and lower bounds there. So this is just going to be 1 third times 5 cubed minus 1 third times 2 cubed. So 5 cubed minus 2 cubed. So that would be 117 over 3. And it's that easy, folks. Just find our antiderivatives. Now, isn't that a lot better than... Uh, the limit definition stuff. Okay, so let's do one more example here. Let's say we'll do some trig functions. We'll have uh, integral from 0 to pi of cosine of x dx. So what's the antiderivative for cosine? That would be negative, or that would just be sine of x. We'll evaluate that at 0 and pi. We'll find the difference. So that's sine of pi minus sine of 0, which is what sine of pi. So remember your unit circle stuff here, right? So pi would be this point over here. And then sine is the y coordinate, so that would be 0. And sine of 0 is 0. So 0 minus 0 is 0 on most days. Now remember, that actually makes a lot of sense. I might think area being 0 is kind of weird, but cosine, if you recall, looks like this. And remember, this integral gives us the net area. And what we're finding right now is the area from here to here, and you got the same amount above the axis as you do below. So remember, this is always positive area. Anything below it is negative. And, well, you know what? We could always do uh, one more example. If I can get this thing to work all right. Okay. So let's do integral from 1 to 5 of e to the x plus 2 ln of x minus uh, 1 fourth x to the fifth. So remember the antiderivative for e to the x would just be e to the x plus... Now, what is the antiderivative for 2 times the natural log of x? So, natural log of x, if you don't remember the antiderivative for that, is x ln of x, 2, x times the natural log of x minus x, okay, minus, now we have to add 1 to that exponent and then divide by it, so that would be 6. So 4 times 6 is 24, 1 24th x to the 6th. Okay. 
and we'll evaluate that from 1 to 5. So that would be e to the fifth minus 10 times natural log of 5 minus 5 minus 1 24th times 5 to the sixth minus e to the first. Well, that should have been a plus back here. Plus 2 natural log of 1 minus 1 minus 1 fourth. Now combining terms and stuff like that. Uh, let's see, natural log of 1 is equal to what? So, e to the what power equals 1? So, this piece equals 0. And so, adding up stuff, we have, what, an e to the 5th minus um, e. I'm just looking at things. I'm trying to think of uh, plus 10 natural log of 5. And take, take care of those things. And then we just have minus negative 5 minus And there we go. So, that would be our exact answer, okay? Um, of course, you could type all that in and get an approximation. Um, you could also use a calculator to get an approximation, stuff like that. But it's just find the antiderivatives, evaluate it at the upper bound, evaluate it at the lower bound, and find the difference between the two.